AWS, have they commoditized it or decommoditized the CPU? So two things before I start. First, I've always thought of Paul as the Barry Manilow of our team. <laughs> this creative <laughs> yes. jingles. Uh, hats off to you. And second, Pat, you, you called it out before, um, before we started recording how big my head was relative to everyone else's. I cannot stop looking now. <laughs> I mean, you just got, I mean, big head, big brain. I mean, yeah, yeah. how else, or, you know, what kind of melon do you need to put that big brain inside of? Trust me, there's not a lot there. I just use a lot of a lot of the capacity. Yeah. And by the way, for the sake of everybody, before you turn me into HR, Matt, I want to be very <laughs> clear that it had everything to do with the camera perspective, as opposed to <laughs> Matt actually having a, a big large head. Volume. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Frankly, I have a, kind of a small head, strangely enough, but... Um, <laughs> I don't think that's one of the topics. I don't want to spend too much time. It's okay, on. now the entire audience is focused on the head. Yeah. So. I love it. Good luck, buddy. <laughs> All right. So here's here's the deal with with my uh, my my headline here. So you know, 2023 was interesting. Uh, you know, obviously uh, AMD and Intel have done quite well um, with the cloud providers, but in 2023 we saw Microsoft come out with its Cobalt CPU as well as Maya, its um, its AI acceleration uh, silicon, and we saw uh, we saw AWS come out with Graviton 4, which you know they've been doing it for a while. So you're like, okay, but what was interesting in there is is where is Microsoft and and uh, AWS and Google with with Ampere have really gone after the low-hanging fruit with ARM, that one single socket kind of cloud-native workload. Um, they've really attacked that space with ARM, which has had put a little bit of a dent into the kind of the merchant silicon providers. With Graviton 4, um, you know, AWS did things a little bit different. Number one, they took full advantage of ARM v2, that high-end CPU architecture, or IP, I should say, um, and they built out a two-socket solution based on that. So what they've done is in being AWS and seeing what they did with the original Graviton, I have no doubt they're going to aggressively go after and and deploy uh, dual socket Graviton for wherever they can, Yeah. right? So it's not just cloud native, it's virtualized workloads, it's database workloads, it's analytics workloads. Um, if you if you believe some of the hype, it's gonna be um, some, some implementations of AI as well. Um, so, this is this is pushing that dual socket arm further and further up the stack, if you will, uh, and really starting to reach into where Intel and AMD have really kind of made a lot of revenue and a lot of margin. So the question that I have, and it's really I wanted to tee this up for discussion, is, and by the way, I, I have to think Microsoft will follow suit once they see the you know what it delivers in terms of cost savings. Uh, to AWS and Google's certainly going to follow suit, given their history of silicon development. What does this mean? Is the CPU, you know, commoditized? And by the way, does it matter, given that we see, you know, specialized silicon for AI, seeing that we see specialized silicon for analytics, um, ex, you know, different types of accelerators, and seeing where AMD and Intel are going in their roadmaps, does a commoditized CPU even matter at this point? I, I'm kind of curious as to what y'all think about this. I mean, I'm usually shy. So let me jump in here. <laughs> Especially when it comes to Silicon Pat, right? Yeah, I mean, listen, if we look at the basic Webster dictionary definition of commodity, I mean, it's up there with coffee, tin, uh, and things that can be used that are, that are interchangeable. By the way, I don't like to drink tin or use coffee uh, to, you know, make, beer cans, but uh, it's not, it's interchangeable uh, between something, something else. My take is that what AWS did is they decommoditized it in that, in that they found a way to either uh, make more money, uh, make more profit, uh, or they can offer low cost and they can hire, uh, offer premium. Uh, on this, and I know you're specifically talking about the CPU versus versus something else, but I feel like they decommoditized it uh, in in what they were were able to to do. And and just to be factual, Azure 
they, they already announced an arm based uh, design uh, based on Neoverse 2. Mm -hmm. I think the difference there was um, uh, integrated networking, mm -hmm. uh, but it was pretty much an off the shelf uh, arm arm design. And I agree with you, Matt, we're going to see this. Um, we're going to see this uh, inside of um, uh, Google Cloud mm -hmm. uh, very, uh, uh, very soon. What do you all think? Anybody else? I don't really have much to add um, other than Pat. You know, you're usually spot on with um, with your analysis of this sort of stuff. So. Only when I'm uh, only when I'm not. <laughs> only when I'm not. Let me ask you this, Pat. You're sixty percent right all the time, right? <laughs> I, do, you, do you think this has a major impact on AMD and Intel? I mean, if you think about the revenue hit. Uh, potential revenue hits, right? And the reinvestment that these companies can make back into product line, new investments, so on and so forth. Do you, do you see this as any kind of real challenge to what uh, the merchant silicons, as you like to call them, what they're doing? Uh, absolutely. Uh, and one little blurb that came out at the very end of AWS reInvent was that, that Amazon had shipped 2 million uh, Gravitons. Mm -hmm. And and while while that doesn't you know completely destroy the the server market, it, it's two million units at an AUP of five hundred bucks. I'm guessing uh, at that uh, each that Intel and AMD uh, didn't didn't have right. And I I see this as as people get enterprises get more comfortable uh, with uh, with with ARM. And when you build a modern app, it's really a no-brainer uh, in the ability uh, to do that. And as you see Oracle and SAP uh, jumping on, it's removing those uh, those objections uh, big time. So, yeah, it's gonna it's it's gonna leave a a a mark. And until I think AMD is showing dom performance dominance right now. But uh, if and when Intel uh, catches up on the on the performance performance per watt side, it it it, it will make sense. One thing to factor in: let's just even say they were the same performance, or even if homegrown were a little bit less performance. What you're removing is the hundred percent gross margin uh, from both AMD and Intel that that the customer doesn't have to take. Yeah. And if they have the scale, if you're going through TSMC, uh, you're getting a, a decent uh, price out of them, then, and you have a, a big enough design team uh, to do it, then economically, it's it's almost a it's almost a no brainer. Yeah, I do I do like that Intel and AMD continue to drive kind of differentiation. Yeah, you know, and a good example is what Intel's done with its acceleration engines, right? Kind of build in these workload um, specific accelerators into the silicon to drive differentiation and assure that, you know, there's a, a relevance um, within these modern workloads instead of just more cores, more memory, right? It's a build in differentiated performance. Um, I think that's going to, that's going to drive better adoption than simply trying to match core for core for core. I, I think at some point that's a, Talk about a sum zero game. I mean, nobody wins in that, right? Yeah, and you know, and I, I urge you to check out the show notes and look at Matt's um, Matt's research note on this. You know, you also hit on AI accelerators too, which, by the yeah. way, that's a done deal, right? Mm -hmm. Now, all three vendors have an inference and a training solution that's homegrown. Yep. Uh, and and that's why now none of them have a GPU, which is why Nvidia and AMD. Uh, are so popular, and I think in 2025 uh, we'll see a new product out of out of Intel uh, that's going to be more of an AI GPU. They have a very capable, high performance computing GPU based design, yeah. uh, but they do not have one uh, for data center AI. 